Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar today. We're being joined by Linda Manzer, who, uh, you know, this is the first time we've ever done this. It uh, is. Yeah, it's the first time we've ever done this. I, I, I've been, um, I've been talking to you about it for about six years now, and um, <laughs> I'm glad that we, we finally put it together. Um, we did a special on you uh, with, um, when a whole bunch of your guitars uh, were with Ted. Um, oh right, right. Ludwig, and we went through Ludwig. six or eight of your guitars with him, and that was that was a whole lot of fun. But how are you? I'm great. I'm great. I was I was just telling you uh, that I was out in my backyard uh, chopping some wood, so I'm a little uh, frazzled. <laughs> <laughs> now, were, were these tops or backs or sides you were chopping? Uh, it's actually, I'm making a wedding arbor for uh, a friend. So it had nothing to do with, I was actually taking trees and turning them into, so I'm trying to turn t some felled trees in my neighborhood into something beautiful, but you're, we'll see. You're in Toronto. I am actually in Almont, lovely Almont, Ontario, which is near Ottawa, Ontario. Okay. And uh, it's a little town um, that is actually the birthplace of James Naismith, inventor of basketball. Um, and it's a it's a, a a cute little mill town with a river running through it and lots of mills and waterfalls and uh, lots of uh, cool art artistic people. But it's uh, it's small enough that you can walk to the center of town in about ten minutes. Oh, that's and, that's, uh, that's that's fantastic. Well, listen, you know. Um couple things uh i i just i i'm i'm you know the the, the over word the over overused phrase you know i'm honored that you're here but i we are honored that you're here i mean um you know I, your, your work is um second to none um you know i when i when i look at what you've done with guitars and the and the various things that you've done with the instruments that you've built you're kind of like somewhere between Da Vinci and Michelangelo. I mean, you know, you oh, those guys. <laughs> those, those guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you're. It's beyond. I mean, a lot of a lot of the the, the builders, you know, they build great stuff, functional art. Um, but you're like your iceberg guitar, for example. I mean, good God, um, I'll try to find some pictures of this thing. I mean, just the, you know just the mechanical engineering of it alone is like uh is is crazy and and then of course the picasso guitar which is so famous you know the pat metheny uh you know it's listed as both 52 string and 42 string would you want to clarify that for us or is one 52 and one's 42 <laughs> they're they're both uh 42 they're both i made 42. one for pat metheny and one for scott chinnery yeah the collector uh, which know, was a copy of pat's so I've got a question for you. Um, I figured you might. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a lot of questions for you. I mean, it's, it's so there's so many places to go. But uh, speaking of that guitar, now people haven't seen it. This is a multi-neck guitar that you built for Pat Metheny back in the 80s, I believe. 84, yeah. 84, yeah, 1984. It's, uh, you know, several, all kinds of strings everywhere, 42 strings. Are you a mechanical engineer? I mean, do you, have, do you have that background? How do you know no. when you put all those strings on that top and that back and that sides and you tune at the pitch, it's just not going to implode? Well, I wore safety glasses and I stood back with each string <laughs> waiting for that to happen. I just, you know, I, I'm serious. I did. I wore safety glasses because I wasn't sure really what was going to happen. <laughs> At, at the moment of truth has any ever has anybody ever done the mathematical calculation as to how much pressure is a uh, poundage of pressure is on that top well an average guitar steel string guitar has about 200 to 250 approximately mm -hmm. uh pounds of pressure so i multiply that by four string sections uh i i wild guess is a thousand pounds yanking in different directions yeah. So, so you sort of calculate the what's what you have to really calculate is what's happening structurally inside the guitar right. to counteract that, but also you know stop it from exploding or imploding, okay. but also you want it to be sensitive so it actually sings. Yeah. So there's this kind of del. It's really easy to make it so it doesn't explode, but then you've got a lump of you know 
uh, you know, it, it's just too structurally strong and that you're not um, going to get any resistance. Steel, steel and concrete does not make a great sounding guitar. True. You know, so yeah, no, I, 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 because I, I look at that thing, you know, I, I, I have just enough um, background in all of the, all these different engineering and physics and all, just, just enough to be dangerous. I mean, I don't really know anything, but I know enough to know that, man, that's got to be a lot of pressure that's, uh, you know, that's on that instrument, especially when it gets, when it gets tuned up to pitch and. Um, I, I was just thinking, how in the world, you know, do you, you know, do you do the math on that? I mean, how do you, how do you, but I, I guess, you know, and, you, and you, when you're cutting the, um, you know, cutting the, um, all the braces and everything like that, I mean, in, you know, and then shaping them and everything. Oh, yeah, this, this will hold a thousand pounds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, it's kind of common sense. I mean, you think of uh, like a, an egg, right? How strong an egg is yeah. and it's because it's arched. You know, it's it in some directions it's easy to break it, but in other ways of pressing against it because of the arch, it's right. difficult to to until it does. Obviously, eggs crack open eventually, but um, you so it's just kind of imagining what everything's doing, and and so I I spend a lot of time sparing staring into space, kind of trying to imagine the worst case scenario, right? Which is you know probably you know a good attitude to have in guitar making and probably a really bad attitude to have in life you know <laughs> <laughs> well uh, let's talk about the iceberg guitar for just just a, just a minute i mean i mean you've got so many i mean the the the, the piece of art that's on the back of it Mm. Um, and you know, I mean, you, you can talk about that that a little bit. Uh, I, if I try to explain, tell tell us a little bit about the concept of the iceberg guitar, where it came from. We'll get a picture of it from you, or we'll pull, pull it off the internet to show what people what what we're talking about here. Okay, but, but um, well, go ahead. Okay, well, it's actually it's actually uh, called the Lauren Harris guitar. So uh, in about. Uh, 2000 I went into an art gallery and saw some paintings by some Canadian painters called the group of seven mm -hmm. uh, and there was seven of them uh, hence the name group of seven actually there was more than seven because they kind of fluctuated in numbers but it 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 struck me that there was seven apprentices or six apprentices of Larivee plus Larivee which made seven that in my sort of uh, you know era with uh, Jean-Claude Larivee as my teacher and I thought, wouldn't it be a great adventure for these seven Canadian builders to build one guitar each to represent each one of these prominent Canadian painters that are named the Group of Seven? So we got together. We decided that uh, we it was a project we were all on board for. We approached a gallery, um, and uh, they they loved the idea. They financed it, including a documentary, full length documentary film. And it took about five years for the whole project to come together, but then it, it showed at the McMichael Art Collection in Kleinberg, Ontario, and they own the collection. Um, and we did uh, the seven guitars, and my artist was uh, Lauren Harris. And Lauren Harris did a series of paintings in the north of Canada, which included icebergs and barren trees. And we all kind of went into our corners and researched our artists. And about a year later, we came up with these guitars and they were presented at this show, which was a huge success. Um, the gallery, you know, was kind of blown away by uh, the attendance levels and the membership that uh, how it increased because it married art and music. Right. Um, and as it turned out, my my painter, Lauren Harris, lived uh, in Toronto uh, near where I, I lived. And so if you walked around the area, you could see some of the buildings he had painted. Um, then he kind of led the group to to the wilds of Ontario and um, and then to the north of Canada to the all uh, where the icebergs are. And uh, so he did a ser he had a series of uh, eras that he painted sort of. Uh, and and I researched them like crazy. And that guitar is the result of my concept was to make a guitar that um, uh, if Lauren Harris had made a guitar, this is what it would look like. <laughs> <laughs> or if, or if his paintings morphed into a guitar that's yeah. what the, that's what they would look like um well and then like the the edges and stuff like that you serrated them 
you know, like the, the bottom, you know, on the bottom bout, you know, it's, there's, yeah. uh, tell us about that a little bit. Okay. So when I found out I was going to be doing Lauren Harris, cause it was kind of organic how we decided who got who. Right. Um, uh, but I ended up, as I was discovering it, I was walking towards one of his paintings in the art gallery called Mount Lefroy. Um, and at the bottom of that painting there, he painted in kind of an abstract, the uh, the sculpture of the cliff at, at, on a mountain. Right. So it, it was uh, it was basically jagged. Yeah. Um, so what I did was I thought that would be I could figure out how to make the sides emulate that. And it was actually technically making that was really, really, really challenging I, I, and I, fun. Crazy. I mean, it, we all went nuts. I mean, I did mine, but, you know, there was grit <laughs> last in, and you're looking at it now. I can see. Grit I'm trying Laskin, to. Yeah. Uh, George Gray, Sergei de Young, um, David Wren, Tony Duggan Smith, and uh, John Larivate. Did I name all everybody? I hope I did. Um, I'm looking. We at all the... had different. We all had different artists, and each one of us had a completely different way of exploring and representing our artists. It was totally fun, and we had such a great time. It was, I, I think, one of the best experiences of my life. It's it the it, the instrument. I mean, for example, on the um, people know that you put in, um, you know, uh, slots. You know, a slotted um, door, if you will, or window that. Oh yeah. On the on the upper the upper front bout, and um, the purpose of which uh, some people say it's a monitor. Some people would say it's a bass tune. I mean, it, you know, whatever you want to do with it, but the door actually slides on the on the on the guitar. And uh, I actually have an instrument here. Hang on. I'll amuse everyone while you're gone. Yeah, do a little <laughs> dance for us. So this instrument here, if you can see it, this is yeah. a Ryan, Ryan Thorell guitar, but he's he's got a you know a hole right here. If you, mm -hmm. and I can um, see. And this is a a plug that he made, and you know so you can put the plug in. Now what yours does for people that don't know is you've got a sliding door here. It's very mm -hmm. elegant. And the reason I even bring this up is because you've got a, on the door, on this section of the door, you've got a one a, a, a simulation of one of his paintings. Yeah, a window. A window. Hey, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so, so you grab the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the window by the bottom and you can open and close it. Yeah. And you can see through it because it's so thin. Right. So if you actually turn the lights out in the room and shine a light, into the sound hole of the guitar the the window is backlit now did you paint that oh yeah i well i i used watercolor pencils okay. i i uh, got these really fantastic watercolor pencils that are kind of the best that you could buy that are light fast they're kind of museum quality right. and what i did is i because i went to a couple of art colleges in you know before i started making guitars so i like drawing and painting so right. what I did was I just simulated the windows. I just I just copied uh, him. And in reality, what the, each one of his little windows were little masterpieces because each window he drew he put on all the things he did of houses were um, just like about six ten strokes. Yeah. It's just boop, boop, boop. and so they were so simple, but he was so good at catching the shadows and the light. He was so masterful. When you when you study a painter that thoroughly and you're staring at the details and you can see where their brush strokes go and you're trying to imagine, you know, how their body was moving and how quickly they were painting. It's quite an in-depth uh, exploration into that that person. You know what it's I felt quite a connection with him by the time I'd finished. Um, he's, it, he's 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 gone, but I was able to I was in contact with his uh his nephew, who is about 80, and he came to the show and yeah. saw the actual pictures. He looks kind of like Lauren Harris. And so there's a picture of him beside my my very, guitar. Which a very exotic, fun. a very exotic looking guy. He's almost got like an Albert Einstein cousin kind of look about him, you know. And he also listened to apparently his uh his cousin, his nephew was telling me that he used to listen to music at kind of full blast when he was painting, like Stravinsky. <laughs> So yeah, I can just imagine like that uh, commercial with the the guy in the front hair of the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I, 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 I do the same when I'm when I'm working. I kind of blast the music too. So 
Okay, so now I got to ask the question, what do you listen to? Oh, it changes. Um, I do listen to a lot of movie soundtracks, actually. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, not not like popular music, but ones, you know, kind of uh, modern classical. Um, I like listening to instrumental music because I find the words distracting. So I yeah. don't listen to a lot of music with lyrics. Um, I've got a few favorites, but... Um, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I totally, I totally understand, um, you know, why it's, you, it's great to work with. Yeah. Why you would do, I mean, when you, um, when you use music for meditation or something like, you know, something like that, um, you know, you know, there's never any lyrics on the music for meditation. It's, it's always, yeah. it's always very ethereal. You, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to hear, oh, you know, so, you know, nothing. You want something to clear your mind, not to clutter it, you know. That's so, a good way of putting it. Yeah, but um, and so on the back of the guitar, you oh, yeah. you mimicked one of his um, I'm gonna say one of his I guess I'm gonna call it it's like an etching, but it's it's more than that. It's a design concept for for one of his paintings, and you you put together something in his style. I mean the the artwork that's in the guitar and on the guitar is fascinating. And here's the, here's the here's the ballsy part. So here you got this guitar that's built by, you know, I mean, probably the finest builder in the world right now. Um, these, your instruments are, I know that, I know you put a price on them, but they're priceless. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, uh, they're, they're amazing. And, um, and now you're going to draw on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't could, I? Maybe I, I shouldn't. Huh? I could just see this. I could just see this little this little girl with her crayons, you know, on the wall. Yeah. Hey, mommy, look what I did. You know, look what I, <laughs> and and it's like, okay, all right, sure. I'm gonna draw on this guitar, and and I could just see that before you do it, you know, so somebody was gonna look at you and go, um, Linda, uh, have you thought this through? <laughs> <laughs> And of, and of course you probably haven't, you know, you're just going as an art, an artist would, but, um, I, t tell me about that process. I mean, what, what, what were you, what led you to do that? Well, one of the great things about the project is we had access to the archives in the, the, the basement of the, the, uh, of the, of the, um, museum or art gallery. And yeah. I was able to see, um, what, what he did before he would, do his larger canvases is he would uh, make a kind of a sketch and he would grid it off and he would write in little, you know, in his handwriting, what color he wanted here. And he'd do a rough sketch right. so that he could make it bigger. And, um, and he would just write little notes to himself uh, of what, where he was going to go and what he was going to do. And I thought it would be kind of amusing to do that on the, the very, it was a very big guitar. I mean, it was like 20 inches or something, a huge, big, open space of curly beautiful curly maple uh -huh. uh, but i thought i would just in the middle of that make uh, this one of these sketches i gridded it off and i started doing pretending that i was making a map of the guitar i was making for him so so i did kind of even though the guitar is done at this point i'm now making a sketch of imagining what um you know my my blueprint for this guitar but i included a uh, part of my journey with with him and uh and all the stuff i'd found out about him and there's sort of inside baseball kind of little things to myself there that are amuse me but um the other thing that is in that sketch is um when i had access to the archives i found some letters that he had written to another canadian artist who's quite famous who was not part of the group of seven and as a woman by the name of emily carr who lived in British Columbia and she was uh he was very fond of her and he guided her because she was I think she had insecurities well she clearly she did from what he was writing to her so they had an agreement they would write letters back and forth to each other and after they'd read them they would destroy them well luckily Emily Carr did not destroy Lauren Harris's letters to her but he destroyed hers to him so you have one side of the conversation but I spent an entire afternoon reading through all his letters to her, and it was incredibly revealing. Um, 
And it was just so inspiring. And I just, I felt like he was writing letters to me, like, don't be afraid, you know, uh, you know, try to find the, the place, you know, that makes your soul sing. And, you know, when you're working and I mean, I would just paraphrase that wrong, but so in this sketch on the back of the guitar, I've included a little bit of the handwriting. I basically copied the handwriting and wrote little parts of that. Dear Emily. So, um, you know, it's really it's really interesting. So I'm an actor. Um, I decided to try to become an actor about six, seven years ago. And um, and, uh, you know, I'm you know, working my way up, as they say. And there's a book called An Actor Prepares. Hmm. And, and when an, when you're really doing a role, you know, the things that you're supposed to do to learn the character are exactly that, you know, really get inside of them so that you can understand who they are and what this character is. And even if it's a, a fictitious character, you, you know, you, you make up your own stories about them, who they are, who their mother was. Did they go to school? Were they bullied at school? Were they the big man on campus? Were they you know, were they, were they whatever? I mean, you, you know, you come up with this great, huge story. And if it's a real person, um, you know, like, um, uh, you know, the, the one, you know, anyway, if it's a real person, then it's, it's a little easier because there's stuff on those people and you can really dive into them deeply. I have never, I, I don't know every guitar builder out there, but I've never heard of any guitar builder going to that Left that that length that depth excuse me i said i said like i said left going to that depth and that level to <laughs> understand the character of the of the person that you're building the instrument for let's say in this case it's it's him i mean that's that's astounding to me that that you did that i mean it's like who does that well you do obviously but i mean well wow. i we all did though um that was what was the cool thing about it. Uh, it. Each one of us, the seven of us, went to extraordinary lengths to research. Uh, for instance, George Gray, had the, his artist was Frank Johnson. And there was a painting Frank Johnson had been in a plane over a part of southern Ontario. And this would have been in like 1925 or 30 or something. Right. George flies a plane. He, he actually has a, a little plane. So he hunted for that spot in the plane and took pictures in his with his camera of that spot um and he he uh that's that's part of his his work he also wow. um i think he went to a museum where uh somebody grit laskin uh or i don't know it's tony duggan smith uh had a little piece of uh of a spoon he found in the basement of uh Arthur Lismer's um, basement where he lived in Halifax and right. and Tony had actually lived in that house I mean there was all these really spooky connections but um, we all really took it seriously and we also as we started the project we realized these are iconic Canadian painters mm -hmm. and the responsibility of representing them you know our interpretation of them was right. going to be judged you know, very uh, deeply. Uh, and, I'm, and we were all really nervous, I think, about suddenly, like, uh oh, and like, Lauren Harris is one of the most <laughs> beloved painters in Canada. And who do, who am I to think I can pull this this one off? So we all we all dove in and we disappeared for months working on our guitars. Were you a good student, like in high school, college and all that? <laughs> um, probably not. Uh, I was a teenager. <laughs> I, I you mean were my marks good or was I? Yeah, I yeah, think I, yeah. I don't think I was. I think I was probably below average in terms of uh, grades. In terms of probably, grades. yeah, probably. So, probably school wasn't for me, but I I had a lot of extracurricular activities. My my gang of people that I hung out with were most of them were kind of eccentric artists, right. which is incredibly fun when you're a teenager. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and we got into all sorts of silly hijinks and stuff like that. That that was fun, though, you know, like as far as I can remember. Well, I um, I've got so many topics I want to get into with you, and and I, 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 I just really quickly on that. So, um, I guess why why did you start building guitars? 
That is the question I have been asked about a thousand times. I figured and you had. I hadn't heard I, the answer. I, I try not to go into a coma when I start answering the question because no, no, no. I've said it so many times. Just one, uh, one, 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 one sentence, two sentences. One sentence. Yeah. I was. I saw Joni Mitchell playing a dulcimer at Mariposa Folk Festival. I wanted one. I right. couldn't afford it. Uh, and I went to buy it. And the guy at the shop said, well, there's a kit that you can make for half the price. Right. Got so it. I... I bought it, I made it, and um, that was the beginning of the, you know, being bitten by the luthier bug. Got it. And I, <laughs> I don't, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to put you in a coma. I'm still awake. I don't want to put you in a coma. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I mean, I literally was asked it twice in the last 24 hours. Uh, no, I know, I, I know, and I, I wasn't going to ask that question, but I'm, that's I'm, okay. I, I, as I was delving into your personality more and more, and I was going, hmm. All right, so the hmm. Ukraine guitar. Hmm. Okay. You built a guitar um, and I guess donated it or somebody sponsored the instrument that went all around the world and the proceeds of the sale, I'm assuming, of the guitar were to go towards, um, uh, you know, to benefit the people of the Ukraine. Is that pretty correct? That's uh, pretty correct. It, it, uh, the guitar I built when the war started, I was trying to think of something I could do mm -hmm. that was because uh, I was like many people outraged about what was happening. And I thought that the most productive thing I could do was to build a guitar and auction it or sell it or raffle it. Right. Uh, and whatever money I got was going to go directly to humanitarian aid to the people streaming out of the country with no money. And so what happened was I, I made the guitar and then uh, somebody I know was watching me struggle with how to, make money off of it what what was the best way turns out raffling it was difficult auctioning it was difficult there so he said i'm going to put you out of your misery i'm going to give you this huge donation that i'm going to put directly into this one charity that we both agreed on um and he said now i i guess i own the guitar but i'm going to give it right back to you and let's start fundraising with it and and we'll give the guitar to you the people of ukraine so that's what happened so the idea was to hand the guitar from person to person. And eventually I had people signing the case. We didn't start off with that because we missed a few people. I wish I'd had the chance to get them to sign the case. Right. But it ended up going all over North America um, and to you know the East Coast of the United States and Canada and Chicago and Nashville and Los Angeles and Woodstock um, and lots and lots of people signed it. Um, I think there's about 120 signatures on the case. Yeah, I, I I actually I saw the instrument out in Colorado when we were out there. Yeah. A couple of years. Oh yeah, ago. in Colorado, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was pretty amazing. So um, I'm going to ask you about your uh, about you know your client that everybody knows, um, you know Pat Matheny, who you built 23 or 24 instruments for. More. Uh, more than that now. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah. I I've been having I he, I keep. I I didn't keep really great records at the beginning, yeah. and a few of them have snuck by, but I think I'm up to about 25. That's that's a lot of instruments. Um, what a cool collaboration that has to be. Yeah, you know, it is. It's I mean, I, I, I yeah, I, I met him. I met him one time um, in the green room when he was was in Atlanta, and we talked for a while, and then we. Um, we sent a few emails back and forth on something that we were kind of messing around with. And I think I may, may have mentioned that to you, but um, I mean, you know, that's, uh, I mean, he's, you know, I mean, there's no doubt about it. He's the most popular quote unquote guitarist, you know, pure guitarist, uh, you know, in the world, you know, that I, that I, you know, if, if, if improvisational jazz, whatever you want to call it, guitarist. And we're not talking about, you know, Eric Clapton or Slash or whoever, you know, we're talking a different style, but, um, and, uh, you know, and your instruments are, are crazy good. So the, you, the, I, I would just like to be on a, a fly on a wall when you guys are getting together and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and chatting about what you're going to do next. Cause, uh, man, it's fun. It has to be. It has to. Well, I never know. It, it often starts off with he starts to smile and he says, how hard would it be to <laughs> and then and I'm just waiting for it, you know, 
and then he knows it's whatever it is is a little you know he's exploring too and he just sure. he, he trusts me to kind of go down the road with him which i do of course yeah it's fun They're fun the the nylon guitar um that that you build uh, was that something that that he you know asked for or was that something that you had already been doing uh which one the nylon on his latest album or latest whatever no, they call them now what, CD. what is the what is the small body flat top guitar isn't it i thought that was a nylon instrument that that, that uh, is it is it not nylon maybe it's not nylon maybe it's well not. i've made i've made lots of nylon string guitars and lots of steel string guitars there and they're all different sizes pretty much i mean there's a couple of backup guitars in in that 25 or 26 or whatever it is but most of them are new designs that uh -huh. he's he's asked me for a particular sound or size or you know something uh and then i'll say like you mean like blah blah and then he'll go yeah or he'll say no i meant more like and then so i end up you know we, we collaborate in the conversation then i go away and come up with something and if i have questions i ask him Right. Uh, and he says he, he guides me a little bit, like he, he's a little bit of get guardrails, but for the most part, he lets me go off on my own. Um, and a surprise, you know, <laughs> and you play this and whatever it is, he ends up figuring out something. Maybe it's not exactly what he thought it was going to be, but he's so creative that he he's inspired by whatever it is that's different from uh, yeah, normal. It's uh, it's it's. I mean, I like I said. I, I mean, I, I I know that it's well documented. I, I don't want to ask the question what what started you playing guitar. I don't want to go down that. I mean, you started building guitars. I don't want to go down that route. But I know you get asked about Pat a lot. Um, I I guess the the that's just had that's just to me. I like I said. I'd like to be a fly on the wall to watch that process, and then you know, just to watch you create. I think would be really really a a, a fun exercise because you really and truly are. Truly, really are an artist. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're, and and I, I've watched a lot of your videos and listened to you talk quite a bit. Okay, you know, in preparation for this, I, I also prep for what for what I'm doing, and um, and you know, you you've got a um, you've got a very fertile, active mind, and, 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 and uh, like, the way I, like the way I put that, huh? Yeah, um, I don't know what that really means, but <laughs> no. Well, you you obviously you know. I mean, you're you're incredibly intelligent. You're incredibly curious, and and then behind that, you're also industrious, and and um, and you actually do shit. I mean, a lot of people think up stuff. You know, I'm going to write my memoirs. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to do with this. I'm going to do with that. Ten years later, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I mean, you know, you're one of these people, and there's a few of us out. You know, there's I. I'm going to do this. And the next thing you know, you're doing it, you know, or it's done. And um, so, you know, just watching, watching you, um, you know, create stuff is just, uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal, actually. It's, it's like, it's like, wow. So here's my question. I, I've set all this up to, to say this. So does the mind ever outrun the body's ability to actually bring things to fruition? I mean, you have more, you know, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, like you got all these ideas, but you can only build so many instruments at a time, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to cull the ideas. Um, I'm, I mean, I kind of think anything's possible. Right. So uh, mostly I've got um, a finish line in my head. Right. So the, 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 I, you know, I'm going to have a guitar that, you know, represents Lauren Harris or the Picasso guitar has as many strings as possible. Well, the right. journey to the Picasso guitar was very windy. There was a lot of um, other designs that didn't come to, to fruition because they were too much. There's right. actually at one point a lot more strings on it. And th this was the reeled back version of it because <laughs> at some point out of everywhere and then it was, you know, going to be heavy like this and you know, you'd need like a stand to hold up all the strings way over there. And right. so it got it, it kind of became whatever was actually practical. And that was that was a lot of dialogue between Pat and I. And this is before the Internet. Right. Uh, I think it was before fax machines, if anybody remembers what a fax machine is. Uh, so I, I, I remember actually, quite well. 
I loved the fax machine. Um, I but um, but it w we actually wrote letters back and forth, and I'd wait for the, I'd send the letter, and I'd wait for the answers. So oh there was God. a, I know. Um, and that was when, or if he was near wherever I was, I'd drive there, and we'd talk. If you know, I know where he was going to be. If it was like an eight-hour drive, I'd just drive. And then I'd have like, you know, two hours, I'd, I'd see the concert and I'd have like half an hour with him before or after the show. And then I'd be, you know, I'd have all my information and I'd go back and continue. Um, but I, I have a lot of ideas, but it, mostly I have a, a, a goal in mind and it's just right. a matter of finding the most practical way of getting them with the materials I have, with the knowledge I have, with the skills I have. and like for instance, I'm I'm not good at electronics, right? Um, and I I'm I you know I have somebody else do that because I just know I'm just going to screw it up. I don't understand it, and I accept that's my limitations in that way. Right. Um, that's something I jaw about. Um, and um, but the other stuff I I love you know making wood sing. So that's kind of my job. Well, that's the you know that's the next part of it. It's it's uh, one thing to come up with design. It's another thing to come up with, um, you know, being able to actually create the thing. And then the and then the third part of it is is to be able to create the thing with with real. I mean, just uh, real quality. I mean, you know, your instruments are not only unique in their design and their physics and their their engineering, if you will, and all the things you put in there. But they're incredibly well executed. I mean, your instruments are beautiful. They're gorgeous. I mean, the finishes are great. Uh, you know, all of the, the fit and finish, the trim, the, uh, you know, everything about the instrument. And they sound amazing. Thank you. And, well, and, they're, they're not perfect. Well, nothing <laughs> is, it, of course. I mean, any guitar maker will tell you that, you know, part of their, it's unbelievable how easy it is to still screw sh shit up, right? And, <laughs> and make mistakes but you know uh i can't i'm con every guitar is like there's one big boo-boo that happens and i go how have i not ever done that before and then i have this challenge of how to salvage it or you know turn it into something cool you know right. that's that's part of the fun of it because it is wood you're working with natural materials and sometimes yeah. a big sap pocket is just going to show up you've got this perfect guitar top and boom, there's a sap pocket right in the middle of it. And you're not going to, you're way deep into making the guitar and you have to go, hmm, how do I hide that? Or how do I, you know, Paint it a doesn't have smiley face around it, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's when you put <laughs> stickers on it. <laughs> so, you're, you're, you know, I, I swear to God, I could, I could talk, I really could talk to you all day long. Um, so you're going to Colorado. I am. I am. I know. I know it's exciting. Rocky Mountain I, Star Festival coming up in a couple of weeks, March twelfth, yep. thirteenth, fourteenth. I think it is so September. Yeah. I mean, excuse me, did I say March? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I still haven't figured out how I'm getting there. <laughs> uh, well, you could drive. You know. I know it would take a long time. It does take a long time. I have a I have a 1988 Volkswagen camper van that's just begging me to take it, but I'm not sure it'll make it'll make it. So is that your daily driver? No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. No, that would be, uh, it's like driving a billboard. Yeah, no, I mean, you, um, those, those are quite collectible, obviously, as you probably know. Yeah. yeah. But I'm like, my mechanic is, that's his jam. So I, I, I have a great mechanic yeah. who, uh, loves them and he's got a whole team of these young keen guys who, love polishing everything and making sure everything's humming perfectly so I'm, i've got a good i wouldn't have one of them if i didn't have a good support team behind me to help me yeah I, I drove it to west last year i drove it uh, across uh, north america to go see Joni mitchell and brandy carlisle at the gorge did you did you camp did you camp in it did you actually use it i did camp? in fact i um i it's got a pop-up so you can have somebody up somebody down yeah. and then uh it also has an eight foot square uh room that you can attach right so um yeah so it, it's 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 fun it's uh you know it's it is a camper van so you have to kind of you know get ready to go anywhere in it you can't just hop in it and take off you have to kind of plan a bit but that's the fun 
Yeah. Do you do you uh, do you take a bike with you or something and put it on the back or on the top or is, you have an alternative vehicle of any kind when you're when you get to where you're? No, going? I'm not that organized yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going out to our body. You know, I've got a, I've got some great pictures of, um, uh, uh, of um, you and Parker and, and uh, you know, hanging out uh, when we had breakfast when we were out there a couple of years ago. And um, it's so much fun. A- absolutely. Um, I, I think it's going to be great. Um, what are you taking out there? What instruments are you going to take out there? Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, but, uh, I've just finished one, uh, bird's eye maple, uh, um, arch top 17 inch or sorry, 16 inch. Uh, I've got my actually 50th anniversary, uh, guitar, which I haven't, uh, it's just up on the shelf up there, but I haven't assembled it yet. So it's not quite ready. So I, it's probably not going to make it, which is sort of too bad, but um maybe i've got a seven string nylon string arch top that i made a few years ago that uh, is looking for a home um and i know that uh the wonderful mr ted ludwig is a a seven string player so uh i'm if he doesn't see this before i'm going to surprise him and uh lend that to him to do some concerts with if i don't know i don't know if it's practical or not but you know, you could take the the fiftieth anniversary, a few pieces of it with you. Oh, just uh, just to show that this is this is this is something that's coming. Uh, yeah. You know, you might actually get a. I mean, not that you know, you, may, you might get an order for it, and you might get somebody say, "Oh my God, when you finish that, I want it." Because I think I think that you know, people, even even us people that you know, play guitar and have played guitar our whole life you know, the process of actually how these things go together and what they look like and all that kind of stuff. It's fascinating. And the, the kind of people that are going to be out there at that show, obviously they, they appreciate arch top guitars and the, yes. the, and the people that make them and, and they appreciate them as, as functional art. It might be cool just to, uh, you know, to grab a, a not, maybe not the whole thing, but maybe uh, the top or the back and, uh, you know, a piece of neck, you know, something. And just well the body is uh it's done and lacquered it's just i haven't glued uh the neck to oh. the body and then there's it's uh it's close it's really close but it, i'm not sure i don't want to rush it yeah no no which, no I, i'm no i wouldn't i wasn't saying i just i just thought yeah. I, I know that unfortunately i'm not going to make it out there this year uh oh that's too bad i'm sorry to hear that well uh you know i'll have to edit this out but i had a heart attack in march yeah you know and so I'm sorry I, to hear that yeah, I, I'm coming. I along. That. I'm coming along. I, I thought for sure I would be out there, but uh, you know, it, it's uh, I don't have any permanent damage. So please, everybody, you know, thank you. Um, it's just a matter of until everything heals up, and I have to be on certain kinds of drugs for a while. And mm-hmm. uh, I think I'm more affected by the drugs than I am by any of the physicality issues that I have. So, uh, you know, it's just that's just uh, the luck of the draw. It was it's a genetic thing. It wasn't lifestyle or anything. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do anything like that. And, you know, uh, all that. But uh, at any rate, I'm not going to be there this year. And I, I'm um, I, I'm OK with that. I'm resolved that it's it's going to be OK. But if I was going out there. then I knew that that instrument was there, even in pieces, that would be like one of the first places that I would go. I'd want to huh. see that. I'd really want, I'd really want to see that. I'd say, cause I mean, cause here you go. Okay. Here you, you know, you know how I feel about you as a, as a builder. Uh, you know, you're, you're the top of the line as far as I'm concerned. And, um, and, and, you know, to see what you are doing to commemorate your own legacy for 50 years. I mean, holy shit. I mean, that's like, that's a big deal. Okay, Paul McCartney, write a song that for you, you know, that talks <laughs> about your life. You know, that you know, it's something that you want people to remember the 50 years you've had in the music business, you know? I mean, so I I would want to see what you're doing, you know. I would definitely want to see what you're doing and I think that would be a fascinating display. Um but that's just me, you know. That's just me. Uh that's kind of the way, you know. I I'm, I'm totally into what's going on so you let me just a couple couple more things and i'll let you run um flat tops nylons arch tops multi-string all the things that you do do you have a favorite 
no. I, well, I always say that my favorite guitar is the one I'm working on. Uh, <laughs> good how's answer. that for a, for a, I thought about it, and it is sort of true because I'm the most enthusiastic about whatever's next. Yeah. So because I'm, you know, I I am I'm still feel like I'm learning a lot, um, and I I'm trying to push myself a little bit. I'm trying to be, you know, as consistent as as possible because you know people have an expectation. Uh, but I also try not to think about that too much. I just kind of try to go in the direction I feel like going in. Um, right. um, I mean, I'm, I have a kind of a pretty good, uh, the, you know, share of, you know, split of a steel string flat tops versus arch tops. Right. So it's kind of about 50, 50 right now. Um, and I, I do try to every once in a while throw in one I want to build or <laughs> some wood that I've had years like that. The birds I'm, I've had that piece of wood sitting around for years waiting to make the guitar and I suddenly realized like you know unless I advertise that I've got a piece of Brazilian or um a bird's eye maple back and sides for an arch top nobody's gonna order that so I might as well just make it and do what I want so that that's what I did this year is is uh for fun what size is the body I think it's 16 do you want to see it yeah you, you okay well, it's just it's right here. Of course I want to see it. <sighs> Sneak preview. Oh my god. It's uh I don't know. I'm sure this is gonna be really hard to see this on just, the camera, but just hold hold it as steady. Okay, as I'll you hold can. it. I'll hold I'll hold no, it. No, no, There's back, back up a little bit. Back up a little bit. There? Uh, a little bit more. There it goes. It's coming that's, in. And that, don't, that's don't when move. I fell in the don't, don't move. Don't move. Okay. Don't move. It's coming in. It's it's pixelating. You, you should see what it's doing. Oh my it, god! Look at that! Shoulder? Holy crap! <laughs> wow! And oh it's god. got. That's not just a I... piece of bird's eye maple. That that's no. like every okay, bird. Now... Every bird in Canada's eyes are on that. <laughs> it's got a feather made out of. Um... Oh yeah! Wow! See that? That's made out of uh, uh, black uh, pearl. Yeah. So it kind of goes in and out of. I can make it almost disappear depending, and then catch the light. Yeah, that was beautiful. The egg head is um. I don't know if you can see that a raven. Yeah, I do. I can see it. Yeah. And it's um, kind of misty and. Yeah, I. I love that. I, that that's gorgeous. Yeah, I. It was just something I did for fun. That one. So fun. Anyway, that's, that's what you do for fun, my guy. So I got. I'm going to ask you another question. How, how many okay. hours does it take to build that? Oh gosh. Uh, well, I sort of once did figure it out, and it was about a steel string, a hundred hours at arch top, two hundred. But um, I probably would change that to longer now, because uh -huh. uh, I think I take longer now, and I'm either getting slower or I'm putting more effort into my work, as you know, recommended by great my teacher in grade four. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, so, of, speaking of school right. yes <laughs> oh my god you know i i are we I, going back there <laughs> no you know i i just think you are one of the coolest people on the planet thank you i really do <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that i really do i think you're one of the coolest people on the planet for all the you know all the reasons we talked about i mean you're you know you're you're you're, I'm gonna make you president of my fan club. I love the way. No, don't do that. Okay. About that. You're fired. Uh, thank you. Um, okay. You know, just the way your brain works. You know, I just admire that so much. Um, you know, I just, I just, I just really, really enjoy you. So I just want you to know that I think you're something really special. And uh, thanks, and you're, Bob. You're welcome. Um. I, that's it for me, kid. Unless you've got something, uh, manzer dot com. Yeah. Um, are you? Are you? Are uh, how are you looking for orders? If somebody orders a guitar, what's the what's the waiting period like? It's a couple of years, sort of around now. I'm kind of hopelessly behind. Sorry to all my clients. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to kind of take a little more time off to do. You know, I'm getting older. I want to do stuff like hang out with my family and my friends a bit more. Yeah. Because uh, I am a bit of a workaholic, no surprise. Um, but um, I uh, also, you know, I'm not, I have no plans to quit working right now. I mean, I suppose I, I'm 
easily could be of retirement age. I could stop if I felt like it, but, um, you know, it, it, um, I just love doing it too much. So as long as you enjoy it, you know, that's the, yeah. that's the main thing. I mean, I started, I didn't start acting until I was in my late sixties. Well, I mean, that's great. Yeah. Good for you. Um, and I'm, um, you know, I'm into it. I mean, I, you know, I take classes. I do, you know, I, I do parts, I do roles. I do, you know, I do. And, um, you know, I'm, I don't see stopping doing that. That's like fun. You know, uh, I play the guitar every day. I have since I was about 12. I've got one, two, three, four, four. There's about seven, six guitars right now out of cases that are within wow. five feet of me or 10 feet of me here. Um, you know, so I'm still just as crazy about guitars as I was, you know, back then. Never, never lost it. So as long as you're having fun doing it now, you couldn't give, there's not, there's not enough, there's not a check big enough in the world to get me to go back to the, the job that I did for 30 years when I ran this company that I ran. Um, you know, I, you, you there's, there's not a check. There's just, you can't give me enough money to do what I did, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But this other stuff that, um, that I'm doing. So, you know, if, if you're, if you found that thing that you love, you know, and, um, and you're so good at it and, and you got that 88 Volkswagen camper that needs to go places. I'm just going to add one thing though, that has sure. become a little bit of a hobby for me as I made a guitar, the theme of it was magic. Oh, wow. So, so during COVID I started uh, researching it and I started doing magic tricks. So just for fun. And in, you know, my little bubble, I became, the joke was that I would pull out a pack of cards and I would start doing magic tricks. So I, <laughs> I am, and my, my, my magic name is the awkward Manzini because I, you know, I, I fumble cards all the time. So you, you and Johnny Carson, you know, that was, uh, that's <laughs> yeah, how, that's, that's how he got, that's how he got started actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Bad magic. Yeah. As a kid. Yeah. Got into oh my, it. that's hilarious. I didn't yeah. know that. That's how he... it's it's totally fun, though, because I would, you know, spend five minutes doing a card trick or, you know, two minutes. And I almost get as much reaction from the card trick like, oh, oh, my God, how did you do that? That I get for spending two years making a guitar. I, so... was, I was I played the bitter end in 1970. Uh, I had an acoustic uh, acoustic duo at the time and we had a showcase at the bitter end and it, it was a showcase night. And so backstage. Um, was a magician with us because he was going to come. Oh. You know, he was part of the show. And he's like, with his hands, he's like running a silver dollar from one knuckle to the next, like back and forth. Like, I mean, he was just back there doing stuff. And, and I'm going, what the hell? <laughs> you, know, what are you, you know, it was like, I, I, I said, you know, some humans are just built different. What can I tell you? I mean, it's just amazing what uh, the skill sets that people put together and that they have. So I've got a profound respect for people that can, you know, that can pull all that off. And, and uh, I think it's really, really fun and really, really cool. Next time I see you, you're going to have to do a magic trick or two for me, if you don't mind. Yeah, maybe with any luck, I'll succeed. Like I, I'll, I'll be able to pull them off, but oh, you, you, <laughs> it doesn't always happen. The I awkward, am named the, the, the awkward manzini. The awkward manzini, is that what yes, it is? That's, that's a, this is what I have been called by my close circle of friends who put up with me forcing magic trick tricks on them at dinner parties or whatever. So <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'm not good. I'm not saying I'm good. I'm just, I like doing it. It doesn't mean it's not, I'm definitely not good at it, but I have uh, fun. It's I, a hobby. I, so. I've got, I've got so many things that, that that's exactly how I describe it. I can't do this where there's shit, but I try real hard, you know? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was the perfect thing during COVID, right? When you're kind of yeah. locked. Uh, it, and you have oodles of time um well when you see ken in a couple of weeks ken parker when you see him in a couple of weeks yes. please, tell him I, please tell him i said hello um sorry. i will absolutely um can't wait to see him and megan wells and all the other everybody, other yeah yeah it's gonna be great great fun I, I know that peter is really peter hendrickson who's uh, the rocky mountain art shop festival is like that's like the the festival um i know that you love the woodstock festival you know may it rest in peace um, yes. but the Rocky Mountain Archtop Festival is taking over as the preeminent, you know, Archtop Festival in the world as, as far as, as far as I can see. And, um, That's what I think. Peter, yeah. Peter's doing amazing things with that out. In, Great job. Yeah. Yeah. Out in Arvada. 
Colorado, if you're not doing anything, or if, even if you are doing anything, just to let people know, we'll do a little pitch here. Um, you know, there's mm-hmm. there's a ticket that you can buy for, I think it's $35 that gets you in for three days, um, which is something that, you know, he's done that uh, to let people come in and just look around, see what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's all kinds of music. There's Linda Manzer and, and, and all of her colleagues, if you will. And uh, it, it'll be an amazing show. It'll be a tremendous time. And, um, you know, I know you guys are going to have a ball and, you know, I wish I was there, but, you know, yeah, that is, you that too. yeah. Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with the amazing Linda Manzer. Thank you for spending your time with us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You're oh, the man. amazing Bob Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you, Linda. Have okay, great, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks.